Welcome to worship. Whether you are a member of this faith community or are joining us from another location, we welcome you. I am told that we are up to 91 subscribers on our YouTube channel, and there are some perks from YouTube if we hit 100 subscribers. And so right down here apparently is a subscribe button. If you are blessed by our worship services and join us more than just on occasion, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Also down in that area is a share button. If there's something in worship that appeals to you and you would like to share it with someone else, feel free to hit that share button. And if you'd like to know more about the ministries of this congregation, please email info at refluthks.org. Today, Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Come and worship our Savior. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, and that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Acts, chapter 7. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. 
They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you have had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have you been with me all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe in me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father will be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Unlike Eric, I start my sermons way in advance. I probably could have told you a month ago that today's gospel lesson would be John 14 and that I would most likely preach on one of the other texts assigned for today because John 14 is, frankly, difficult and it's also a text most often used at funerals. And in truth, last week I had started writing a sermon on another text, and then I got mad. Last Sunday, after Rise Worship and Sunday School, I ran out to the grocery store to get a few things, and I didn't like what I saw on my way there. Congregations were worshiping together in person. Two out of three of the church parking lots I passed were more than half full of cars. And I'd also heard from one of our staff members that two congregations in her neighborhood were gathering. And I kept reading and seeing people on the news saying they don't need to wear masks, they didn't need to stay in place because the blood of Jesus was protecting them. And I had a phone call with our bishop, and she told me that an ELCA congregation in our synod was continuing to gather against her recommendation. And then I watched in amazement as Catholic parishes in this diocese opened on Wednesday. And I thought again about using the gospel text often preached at funerals. As I said last week, we are hearing voices, and in this time of so many questions, we are looking for answers from people in authority. We want to know when it will be safe to play together and hug and just relax. 
We want to know when we will feel safe again. In this world where projections keep shifting like sand and we're not sure of our footing, we are grabbing for anything that looks solid and dependable. And people who usually don't have any time for God are turning to God these days because there is stability in God. God is steadfast. And as Jesus identifies himself in our gospel text today, he is the way and the truth and the life. And this is where it all gets very difficult because we don't all understand things in the same way. And some people believe that we should follow Jesus because he will tell us precisely when we need to wear a mask. And he knows when it's okay to have a dozen people together at a table. And he will protect his true followers from this and every virus and hardship. Except the good people, good Christians still get COVID-19 and good people, good Christians still die. Our gospel text today tells us this. If we know Jesus, we know God the Father, God our Creator as well. To summarize, the God we know in Jesus cared enough to become one of us in this broken world. He stood up for the outcast. He healed the sick. He fed the poor. He valued children. He taught the masses. He washed the feet of the disciples. And moments before his death, he made sure that his mother would be cared for. And after death was not victorious over him, he comforted his friends and showed himself to hundreds of people before returning to heaven to prepare a place for us. On all of this, we can agree. And then comes another phrase in which our understanding split. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Dear friends, don't get stuck here. This passage was never meant to be a weapon against someone who doesn't believe exactly the same way that we do. St. Peter is not sitting at the pearly gates with a checklist of 20 theological issues about which you must believe correctly in order to enter. Our entrance into heaven is not dependent upon our beliefs about things like homoousius. And that's good because most Christians don't know what homoousius is. Think instead on this. I am the way. Salvation is not some kind of mathematical equation of sin and good works. It's not going to save you. Jesus is the way. God's grace is the way. God's grace frees us to serve our neighbor out of love rather than obligation. No one is keeping score because Jesus already won the game. And Jesus has chosen us to be on his team. I am the truth. As we know so well during this pandemic, the world will give us a million truths and wait to see if we are gullible enough to believe them. Instead, Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Learn his truth. I am the light. Last week's gospel text ended with this verse, I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. God didn't just say to us, hey, you've made a mess out of this world I created, and now you're stuck with it. I'll take care of your entrance into the next life, but you are stuck with this junk. No. God wants us to have an abundant life here, too. Jesus came to give us that abundant life, and the Holy Spirit remains with us always right here, not just in heaven. As Pastor Amy Richter says so well, God gives us a person and makes us into a people. 
God gives us a person and makes us into a people. Our second lesson today tells us, come to Jesus, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. This spiritual house that we are together with Jesus is solid. It is made of living stones. That is all of us. And if being called living stones isn't enough, we are also called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. Even when we are physically apart, we are solid and strong together. God sustains us now just as God has sustained the church through pandemics, and persecutions and even times of apathy in the past and God will sustain the church in whatever happens in the future in this time of questions there is God in this time of wondering there is the way the truth and the life in this time when we're not sure about the future, Jesus speaks with certainty about his unending and uncompromising love for us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us profess our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Build us up, mothering God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that both destroy and create. We pray for those who are recovering from earthquakes, tornadoes, and other disasters, which is even more difficult during this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety in the midst of a panicked world. Realign the priorities of those whose impatience is leading to further spread of COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. We pray for Diane and Jerry, who are recovering from surgery loved ones who are separated during the pandemic, those waiting for test results, for those who needed surgeries have been rescheduled, those who struggle with mental health issues. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy, living, loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. You made us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love failing and our bodies diseased, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and new life. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remained steadfast. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of Remembering, therefore, Christ's life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ gives everyone a place at the table. Thanks be to God. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, you have greeted us in our brokenness and nourished us with the body of Christ. Risen to new life with you, send us now to bear your healing love into a wounded world. In the name of our risen Savior and Lord, amen. Receive the benediction. The blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, surround you and sustain you, keep you from harm and fill you with courage. Amen. <laughs>